most authors that I work with, especially AI friendly authors, really wish there was a good AI tool out there that could do editing for them. Unfortunately, editing is actually one of those things that I find AI struggles with. While it can be good at some basic proofreading things, when it comes to larger edits, larger suggestions, it only gives you things that sound right, but aren't necessarily going to be right. And I find that with the field of editing, uh, having a human editor is still very much required. In fact, I would say that having a human editor is now more important than having a human writer. And if you are using AI to write your novel, then even more so you want to have a human editor. However, there are tools that are getting better and better at this. And I'm gonna show one of them to you today. And this tool has a second feature as well that I think almost makes it worth the price of the tool alone in addition to its editing suggestions. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the tool we're talking about here is called DeepL, not to be confused with Deep Learning, which is a Google department for researching AI, but they've been known for doing a number of things in the past, but they recently released this editing tool that will do basically line edits of your book. If you're not familiar with the different processes of editing, it, it really boils down to about three. People will have different names for them sometimes, but there's developmental editing, which is the broader, more structural type of editing the kind that require massive rewrites. Then there's line editing, which is going more on a sentence and paragraph by paragraph level to try and tighten up the words, remove unnecessary words, and just make the overall flow of the sentences that much better. And then finally, there is a punctuation and grammar level of editing, usually called either copy editing, sometimes called proofreading. It depends on kind of your exact definitions. But what this looks at is a little bit more on the line editing side where it's going to just make your text just a little bit better. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, we're here in the Deep L dashboard. Now there are a couple of different ways you can use this. You can either just paste text right into the uh, dashboard here, or it does have a Chrome extension. You can make it work with Google Docs and I think a number of other tools you can work with it in there. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to grab some text here that I have from one of my AI written novels. Now, of course, it was AI written, but I've gone over this at least once myself. So it's it's a little bit better than AI written, but it's still gonna have a lot of those AI things that I don't really care for. And so I paste it in here and it automatically just fixes everything that it sees. So we could either, we could just go through and kind of compare, but then you can also toggle this thing that says show changes. And you can see exactly the changes that it made. So it says, it just says Quincy was able to defend himself. And that's probably a good change right there by instead of bringing a wooden stake up, so raising a wooden stake in time to, instead of plunge it, so just drive it through Dracula's heart, through instead of into. So this first sentence definitely I think is, is better. Let me just read it here. So the original sentence was, Quincy was able to defend himself by bringing a wooden stake up in time to plunge it into Dracula's heart. And the first sentence here is Quincy was able to defend himself by raising a wooden stake in time to drive it through Dracula's heart. I'd say that is just slightly better right there. So let's keep looking at some of these edits. So a lot of these edits actually are pretty good. There are a few that I look at it and I'm like, mm, no, I think I would prefer the way it was originally written. For instance, this sentence, blood spreaded from the gaping wound as Dracula's jaws tore through. And I initially just said tore through flesh and this put the flesh, I think just uh, getting rid of the the is fine, just leaving it as flesh. Some of the sentences are a little bit more complex. So for instance, the original sentence here was Arthur Holmwood stood back there somewhere as well. And this one says Arthur Holmwood also stood somewhere in the background. I think that's a better sentence. And it's a little bit more complex in the way that it was able to actually change the sentence in a way that actually makes sense. But here's another one that I wouldn't necessarily want to have. The original sentence was all but useless in the face of Dracula's awesome power. This one says almost useless in the face of Dracula's awesome power. I'd say all but useless is, is more what I would want. It does remove some of the more AI written words in, in some cases. For instance, it changed mustering to summoning which I think is a more appropriate 
word it's less like we it's less it's more commonly used i'd say in actual language but here it made a, a definite mistake where it says summoning all his strength he used the flat of his palm to drive it straight through the vampire's beating heart and the original word was unbeating unbeating would be the correct thing here and it changed it to beating so what i'm seeing here and what i've seen in some of the other tests that i've done is a lot of the edits that it does make make sense and I'd say it's making more edits than I would typically get out of Pro Writing Aid or AutoCrit, which does have very good suggestions, but the way Pro Writing Aid works is it's not going to do it for you. You have to look at the suggestions and uh, approve them. And I think what authors would really like is just a way to not have to do that, uh, to just let it do all of the edits and just know and trust that the edits it's making are going to be good. Here, unfortunately, we're getting close, but I don't think we're quite there. There are at least, I'd say 90, maybe 80% of these edits are good and I would leave them. But a good number of them are things I'm like, ah, no, we don't wanna use that word or make that change. So while it's good overall, and honestly, better than I was expecting, it still lacks a little bit in, in getting all the way there. And this is why editing is so difficult is because so often the edits like sound correct, like the beating heart sounds correct, but it's not able to understand that this is a vampire's and understand the context that this should be an unbeating heart, right? And that that word choice was intentional. So it's very difficult for any of these editing programs to understand, understand the nuance of editing. That's one of the things about editing that makes a human editor so vital is because a human editor can understand nuance in a way that AI, at least at this point, just can't. That said, this is getting very good and I'm really excited to see where this goes. Now, before I leave this section, uh, let's just take a look. There are actually ways to change the style. So they only have a couple of these so far. We have simple business, academic, casual. I'm doing fiction here, so I wouldn't necessarily use any of these. Right now I'm using the default, which is actually none of these. And I found so far in my testing that the default seems to work best for me. If we wanted to, for instance, select casual and hit apply, these changes completely change here. Uh, weirdly, there's like a lot going on here. So Velen Helsing rushed forward, trying to pull the vampire off the dying Quincy, but the vampire was too strong. And it's cutting a whole lot of this paragraph. I think this isn't necessarily bad, but it might actually end up being too simple because this is an important action beat of the story. And it's like cutting too much where you're gonna be losing a whole lot of the sort of emphasis around this action beat. Hard to really explain what I mean by that, but it ju just goes to say like when you're doing an action beat, there should be uh, a lot of emphasis and to, to make it sound really important what's going on here. And often if you simplify it too much, it's it's like the reader is going to read past it and be like, wait, what just happened? So that's kind of the things that, that you could run into. Now, if we tried a different style, let's just go to business and see how it does with that. All right. So we have the sentence here. Van Helsing watched in horror and Mina Harker gasped behind him. <laughs> it changed it to Van Helsing observed the situation with concern while Mina Harker gasped behind him. Definitely more business-like, and I'm sure that if this were a business document, it would be much more appropriate. Uh, but <laughs> observe the situation with concern instead of watched with horror. So yeah, it's definitely doing its job. It's just not the job we want it to do. Uh, you can also set a tone, enthusiastic, friendly, confident, diplomatic. I usually find so far in my testing that at least for me, I get the best results just by not selecting any of these styles and just letting it go with the default. All right, let's look at the other thing that DeepL can do that I actually think is a bigger deal than uh, what we're doing here. And that is what it was originally built to do, which is translate. So when you sign up for an account with DeepL, you get this DeepL Write and you get DeepL Translator as well. I think in order to really take advantage of the translation, there's an extra fee that you have to pay. So uh, we'll talk about pricing in a second, but for the most part, they are two separate things. And so if you wanna have both, I think it's a little bit of a higher subscription but this is definitely something that you could take out a subscription for a month, do all of your editing or translating, and then uh, unsubscribe. So let's go ahead and take the same text that we've been working with and paste it into this language translator. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I guess the 
so this is the limit that I ran into. It isn't going to translate the whole thing uh, because I don't have the super paid version, but it does give us enough here to check out. So I have it translating to Spanish. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I know Spanish. And so I can reasonably look at this and say, is it accurate or not? Now, again, there's a subtle nuance to translation, just like there is a subtle nuance to editing that makes it so even if I can understand and say, yes, that is a correct translation, it might technically be correct, but there it might just be a little awkward. It might not really convey the emotion that you want. So again, even in this case, a human translator is going to be superior to AI translator. That said, most people cannot afford a full translation of a book. And if you are a translator, if you're someone that translates from one language to another, this might be a helpful tool to get you 80% of the way there. And then you just sort of like fix it up to be more engaging and, and more authentic in the language. And even if you're not a translator, you could do this yourself, then give it to a Spanish or, or whatever language you have, give it to a line editor for that. And it'll probably cost you a little less than a full translation. And if you're really strapped for cash and you know that there is a good market out there for Spanish translations or German translations or whatever it is, go for it and give it a shot and see if you can make it work. But anyway, um, if we look at just this first sentence here, Quincy was able to defend himself by bringing a wooden stake up in time to plunge it into Dracula's heart. Quincy solo pudo de defenderse levantando una estaca de madera a tiempo para clavársela a Dracula en el corazón. Um, and that seems pretty accurate to me. Uh, my Spanish isn't amazing, but I, I'm able to understand it at least. Let's see. Let's find the unbeating heart se sentence. So mustering all strength, he used the flat of his palm and a quick thrust to drive it straight through the vampire's unbeating heart. Haciendo a copio de todas sus fuerzas, utilizó la palma de la mano para clavarla en el corazón del vampiro que aún no latía. So yeah, uh, they did, que aún no latía means it, did, it wasn't beating. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, I think that is a decent translation there, at least as far as I can tell as a non-native speaker of Spanish. You can also select any number of languages. So they have quite a few here, certainly not of uh, all the ones that you would want. But right now I'm in the process of learning Chinese. So if I wanted to take this and take my own book and then create Chinese characters out of it and then learn to read my own book with the Chinese characters like this could be a fantastic resource just for learning a different language. Uh, because you could take it into a program like uh, Link or one of those others. Uh, this isn't a language channel, but there's a, a program called Link, L-I-N-G-Q.com, which allows you to bring in documents like this and then actually learn how to say them in the language and it breaks it down so you can, it, it's a really cool program. Again, that's a side tangent, uh, but this could be a really good use case for that sort of thing. So before I go, let's talk about pricing. Now, if you just want the right section um, to do the editing, then this is what you're going to be looking at. The Deep L Write Pro costs basically $11 if you are billed annually. So that would be a total of about $131 roughly for a full year. Or you can go monthly, which is a little more expensive per month at $16.50, uh, but only not that much more expensive. Plus you get a free 30 days. So if you wanna try it out, which is what I did to make this video, go ahead and try it. You get 30 days to decide if you wanna keep it or not. Now, if you wanna do more with the translate thing, all of the translation plans also include Write Pro in it. So you can get that editing in there. If you buy the annual program, it's going to cost you uh, at the lowest level here, $17.49 when billed annually. Monthly, that you're looking at $23.69, which is a little bit more. And that gives you unlimited text translation, five editable file translations per user per month. So you can upload like a document, I believe, and use it that way. And the Advanced Plus Write Pro will give you even more. So that right now is everything I got so far on DeepL. Go ahead and check it out. I think it's a cool tool this isn't sponsored by them or affiliated with them in any way. I don't have an affiliate program with them, uh, but I think it's something to keep an eye on. Definitely. If you want to look at translations in the future or at editing, I, I think their editing tool overall is good and shows promise. It might not be at the point yet where I would be replacing something like pro writing aid or AutoCrit for, uh, for this particular feature but I think it's definitely going in the right direction and something to, to keep an eye on. So with that in mind, I do have a video all about Autocrit if you wanna check that out and, and see if that tool is right for you. 
while it doesn't actually adjust and makes the edits for you, AutoCrit does a much better job of showing you what's wrong and then kind of like helping you learn why it's wrong and figuring out what could be better and what would work better. So go ahead and check that out and I'll see you in the next video.